Good morning, we hope you're well. Yeah, people talking about the summer already being gone. It hasn't it been amazing weather in the last two months in particular. Uh, the hours of sunshine in Britain and in Ireland, it seems, have hit record levels. The Met Aaron are going to be releasing their figures shortly. It has been phenomenal. So it'll be a little bit duller today and a bit of a change in weather for the next few days. We might even have a bit of rain. We're going to be talking to a family in Yall about um, a little five-year-old who wants a little bit of rain for the mud because he likes playing in the mud and he talks about all the wonderful things that you can make with mud. We're going to be talking about the wonderful Meals on Wheels teams not just in Waterford, but around the country. And in particular, focus today is on Tremor. Uh, I was over talking to them the other day and the great work that they do there. We're also going to be talking about the work that teachers have to do over the next few weeks regarding marking the Leaving Cert. Today would have been the first day of the Leaving Cert and the new predictive grading system. What is it going to mean for the class of 2020? We're going to be talking to Dennis Ring, Principal of Blackwater Community College in Lismore. There's a meeting just started now in the last two minutes between the heads of WIT and Carlo IT. It's a matter we raised last week and following that, uh, IT Carlo, uh, they refused to talk to us. The councillors and the politicians seems got a bit irate about that. They called for meetings. So there's meetings now taking place this morning between 10 and 11 o'clock. I'm going to have updates on that throughout the morning. John Crown is going to be talking to us about the health service and we are going to be talking to a number of other different people. The first thing we're going to talk about, though, is about rodents. And uh, it's a very important issue, a really important issue, because the figures anecdotally and also from... Um, Rat catchers and different... It seems to be that rats and rodents are increasing in the last few months because you've got a lot of vacant houses, you've got a lot of issues and people around and also rubbish being dumped. Um, But there are issues that happen with particular houses as well. If rats can get in to a particular house. So we're going to talk about this. So if you're a little bit squeamish, um, you may not want to listen to this, but it is very, very important because uh, w- there was a major issue in Grace Dew there recently. We're going to talk to Matt Ryan, a drain cleaner, about that and how it can affect. So I think we've got Ian Flynn on the line. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Damien. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, you got in touch with me about your, your father's house in Ballybeg and your father is, uh, I think he's in his late 60s and he, he has, has some health issues and he's been... Uh, afflicted with rats. Um, he's been living in the house since around 1998 or something. Tell me tell me about it. Yeah, basically, there a couple of months ago, um, we just started seeing them coming in. Like, there's, they seem to be getting through the loft. Uh, the loft. Now, we don't know if they're coming from, you know, next door or whatever, but they seem to be coming through. And then they're coming down by the back of the toilet and they were getting through. Now, um, like, and over the last few weeks, even last week now, I was actually getting... Um, two a day like look luckily enough they were just seen to be hitting the traps but like we need to find out where they're physically coming in from Damien like it's absolutely a nightmare for him like, like I'm I'm here with him like if I wasn't here God only knows what way he'd be like you know and it's absolutely horrendous like and we, yeah we definitely need to know the council need to trace where they're coming from because they, to me they appear to be coming underground and hitting like because where, where I live in there's four houses in a row and they've got to be getting in. Like, if they're being blocked in my house now, where are they going? Like, we need to get it sorted, like. Yeah, and just to explain to people, the house next door, there was a fire in that house, so that house was destroyed or gutted by fire some time ago. Um, Is that right? Yeah, they were. They were a fire in yeah. the door. Um, so wh- what fire. happens, no. and we'll be talking to Matt Ryan, a drain cleaner, in a minute, uh, a little while, because what happens, obviously, if a house becomes vacant and there can be lots of different things when a house... Uh, when there's issues with a house if it's vacant or if it's on fire or whatever uh, rats can get into an area so it may well be coming from there now fair play to the council they have been doing some work in other words they've they've made an effort and they've been trying to they've been working with you on this Ian haven't they? Oh absolutely absolutely yeah like I can't knock them it's just I personally feel it's a little bit slow but look with what's going on COVID-19 etc you can't knock them but as I said, like, only for Matt, I don't know where I'll be. Like, I can't speak highly enough of, of the man. He's been, like, even I'm, even when he's not working, he's been on to me, he's been out to me, etc. Like, tip wood, he's done a lot of work for me now. Everything seems to be good. But as I said, I'm really wor- wor- worried because we know what they're like. They could easily come back again. Or if it's, if my place is grand now, then where are they going? Like, you know, so it's it's it's, 
it's not nice. Like it's horrible. No, it's horrendous. And uh, I know a lot of people listening to this. They'll be they'll be coiling now, and they'll be they'll be thinking, "Oh God, no, I can't listen to this because." And it's it's my yeah. pet hate. I, I just rats. I just can't stand. Um, and there's different types of rats. If you live beside water, down we'd say in the river, you'll have water rats, mud rats. Then in forested areas, different types of rats. And then you've got urban rats and the size of them. Just tell me, how bad has it got uh, in the house? It got really bad last week. As I said, lucky enough, um, I had Matt out before. We set traps. To me, it looks like they were coming down, but again, I'm not an expert. Um, they're either coming down from the loft, because Matt did find a hole right at the back of the sink where it was really, really bad, where where they were coming through. But uh, yeah, it got really bad last week you now, and saying I was stressed out was, you know, it's, I won't even go there. It was so bad, like, and I said, only for Matt last week. Again, the council did come out. They did lay some poison, but like, at the end of the day, like, you know, they're still going to be there, like, but what Matt has done for me the last few days. And your dad, again, yeah, them. like, it's 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 just a horrendous situation for your, your poor dad. What's your dad's first name? William. William. And it's really difficult yeah. for him, as you say. He has health issues. And the council are trying their oh, best, they say. And, and Matt is a, Matt works with a, he's a private guy. And you'll hear him in a few minutes because uh, we'll be talking to him in a minute. And he basically is, he got in touch with this programme at the start of the, the COVID crisis. And he said, if any old people or any people with emergency workers, if they've any issues with drains and stuff like that, to get in touch. And he's done a lot of work for free. And he's a phenomenal, he's one of these unsung heroes, as you say. Um, but how, like, you're going to bed at night obviously in your own house and you're thinking about your dad sleeping in the house and the rats being in the house oh, absolutely absolutely like as I said like um, last last year was a Wednesday when we started being attacked I basically he, I have not let him near the kitchen done anything in the kitchen anything he needs to be I get a form like the kitchen is completely blocked, blocked off again when, when Matt is after doing looks good but again we just don't know if they're going to attack again with what it, you know if he's hopefully he's blocked off or he needs to block off etc but like we just don't know we're living on a, on a knife edge now as I say I know yesterday the council were out where the fourth house down they basically blasted through the pipe so I know they're going to do some work um, with cameras tomorrow to, to see where they physically are possibly coming through but yeah it's it's a nightmare and it's, like, could you move your dad out for the next while, or uh, what do you think? Yeah, he, absolutely, absolutely. Like, we have no choice. I'd say, at one stage last week, I was pretty much going to get him out of the house completely. Like, but like at the moment, it's okay. But like, if it got any worse, he has to go. Like, I'd say at the moment, with the way the ceiling is, um, and I've no doubt. Like, I'm not an expert, but I've no doubt they had certainly got something to do with the pipes, etc. I can't even shower, and like I say, the council um, are stating that they can't come in because of COVID nineteen. But like you know, he needs to be able to look after himself and stuff like that. Like, and can you hear? Can he hear the rats running around? Um, not not the last few nights, but previously, absolutely, absolutely. And and but and the rats. Last few nights seems to be okay, and um, with with what with the work that Matt is after doing, but. And rats' feces and and the smell of it and the urine. Oh yeah, I, like not physically down, not physically downstairs, but the loft is absolutely atrocious. Was absolutely atrocious. Oh, like it's it 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 is a serious issue because, as I say, with the COVID thing, the council tried to do their best, but they've they've been restricted the last two or three months, and there's been a yeah, lot of evidence. Absolutely anecdotal and otherwise Ian of people and not in this case people throwing rubbish but in different parts of the city and the county people have been throwing rubbish and yeah. and the rats are the rats are out and about they're they're having a field day. Oh absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy. Like as I said, like um the guys have been out, like I say, four houses in a row. Um, you know, one one person might have to take some action with their backyard, but again, that's not for me to say. But other than that it, they're definitely coming from somewhere, Damien, and, we, and they need yeah. to find out where they're coming from. Because, like I say, if my house is fine now, then where are they going? Where are they affecting? Are they getting through people's lofts? Are they just mm. not going to come through mine now and then go to somewhere else? Like, it's, it's, yeah, it's horrendous. Well, that's it, because, like, in any estate, if you move rats or shift them from one house without killing them, 
they'll go they'll go somewhere else, and this is the problem. And um, they will they will multiply quite quickly as well. Oh, um, yeah. Ian, listen, uh, the council, as you say, they're doing their best and they're going to be doing more today and we want to wish those council workers the very best because they have to do all their special gear, they have to dress up because it's a very, very dangerous thing dealing with rats oh. and, 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 and vials disease Absolutely. and all that. And um, I'm so sorry to hear about this. Your, your poor dad, God love him, and your family because you're thinking of your poor dad and, and that situation. So will you let yeah, us... Yeah, like I say, Damien, like mm. I say, if I wasn't around, it'd be just him and like, as I say, he just wouldn't be able to cope Um it's just a matter of, I'd say, like, getting our place sorted. But, again, you know, I'm not selfish. I'd rather know everyone else is good as well. Like, it's just that it's just horrible knowing that they're coming in from somewhere. But where are they? Where are they, exactly? Where are they? Um, listen, we're going to talk to Matt in a few minutes. You've got to go back to work. Ian, mind yourself and let us know, later in, let us know later in the week how you get on, will you, please? I will do. And, again, I just want to say I can't thank Matt enough. He's, you know, he's... He's a, a god in months, uh, months God. He's, the man is unbelievable. Beautiful. Great praise. Ian, take care. God bless. Say hello to your dad for us, OK? Thanks, no bother. Thank, Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank you. Uh, that's Ian Flynn and um, some texts and comments coming in. Joan rang in to 0518461123. Say she's sitting on the chair with her legs crossed underneath her listening to the story about rats. John phoned in to say they should try to get a ferret to get rid of them out of the attic. Uh, another person saying, yeah, Richie phoned in to say a ferret would get the rats out very quickly. Um, good morning. We had rats in the loft. They were coming up through the cavity. We also had the camera work done. Another texter to 0833339375. My lovely friend in Ballybeg has four really children, four really young children, and had to get a dog recently to try to get rid of the rats in her back garden. It's a disgrace and very, very dangerous. Poor Helen is just having her breakfast and um, difficult listening for her. Um, another texter, I live in the country. I have to control the rat situation. However, you cannot buy rat poison unless you have a herd number or licence for pest control. I was going to raise that after this piece. That's a very, very good point. Um, the issue of rat poison and putting down rat poison, there are very strict regulations with it. Um, and I know some hardware stores will, will, will talk to you about that. I'm going to go now to Matt Ryan and um, Matt's a Tipperary man living at Thinkin Ferry Bank and Matt uh, Oh, Matt, good morning How are you? Not too bad You're on the way to a job there You're a busy buckle. Uh Remind me please and our listeners a little bit about the uh, the company you have and what you do uh, It's a drain repair service Damien um, What I do is I give free advice on drainage solutions I do drain cleaning Patch repairs, basically power washing, unblocking drains, um, soft washing, and most commonly at the moment is um, even rats at bay, not entering houses. And so, wh- 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 where are you from yourself, or where's home? Uh, I'm originally from Torles. Very good. In Tipperary. i uh, down here 12 years. Very been good. been in the drainage industry tipping 21 years now, and I'm self-employed four years. Uh, you were on to me at the start of this lockdown because you did a lot of things for free for people and I know uh, like it, it's amazing what people have been saying about you, what you've been doing. I'm not blown, blown smoke as they say but you, you really have done amazing work and uh, one of the stories we've been talking about is the story of um, the house in Ballybeg, Ian Flynn's father's house. Um, how bad is it, Matt, compared to other houses that you've seen? I'd say, if I'm being honest, I mean, the last time I saw similar to that would have been when I was actually employed. It was about 15 years ago. Is is when I when we came to the same thing, but it's the fact that oh god, I, I mean, every corner of the house upstairs just has rat feces in it. Like, you know, it's 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 kind of like they, it was a living, it was a home for them. They were using an old bird's nest as their nesting ground in the attic. But, um, you know what I mean? For for the amount that have been caught, you know, and uh, God knows how many is up in the attic. I've, I've tried my best to, you know, pull the insulation, see or any dead in the attic, but um, I haven't seen any. 
Oh. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. There was one decomposed in behind the kitchen sink, like, you know, and the smell was just... Like, for me now, I, I would be used to the smell of sewage and that, but this even kind of got to me a bit, like. It made you... It was so decomposed. Oh, it made you wretch, I'd say. Yeah. It made you nearly got sick. And tell me about how... how sodden and how wet the insulation was up in the attic yeah you could see it you you could see the rat urine was everywhere and now I I know some people mightn't be aware that the most dangerous part of a rat is is its urine you know it's the wheels disease and and it can hit the respiratory system like in a view of an underlying health issue as well you know people have died from it like so like really, what needs to be done in these houses, the whole insulation needs to be removed, and then all disinfectants and you know new stuff put in. Like I, I just couldn't imagine, you know, when they were in the kitchen area, where they were running around the kitchen as well, like you know. So, um, and I know, as you say, you've done a lot of work, and you you would wear the the best of protective gear, and you'd have all the stuff to deal with this because you're a professional at this. Like if if anybody yeah, else I, I if anybody else went at it, they could be they could be dead now, as you say, from the the vials disease, the wheels disease. Yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah. Like I I'm injected against all that, like you know, because part of the business I'm in, you know, plus my insurance company required as well. Like so, um, what's the injection? Just, what, 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 what's the injection you get? The hepatitis and Different I do, um, you know, I get my booster every three months. So it, it keeps the, the thing, you know, um, there's not a great lifespan on the first injection. So you have to go back every three months and get a booster for hepatitis A and B. And that, that's why it helps you protect against wheels disease as well, like. Yeah. Now I know Ian has been praising you because the work you've done in the house has been like you, 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 you haven't taken a penny for it. And Matt, I don't know how you do. I don't know how you do it. Fair play to you. You just you you, you feel there's certain jobs that people just need a helping hand. Is it? You do. Yeah. I I have seen it over the years. You know. I I'm just the type of person. I suppose I was brought up in a large family. There was thirteen of us, and and kind of. We, we were learning to say, if, if you wanted something, you know, you work for it. So it was never handy. So we had a good neighbourhood as well where we were from in the countryside. So we used to always be helping each other. And I just I just carried it on. Like, from, you know, my father was the same. He was a man that would, you know, get up on a Sunday morning, spend all day doing something for you, and he wouldn't take a penny. So I, I just feel, you know, I do my little bit for the community, even here in Ferrybank, you know. I try my best to, like, you know, do a bit of power washing for someone. I wouldn't take that and off them, you know. So um, it's, it's just the way. It's, it's it's not to be, you know. I don't want people praising me for anything. It's no, just no. Where yeah. I am, like in general, yeah, I'm trying just... to help out as best I can. Yeah, people, yeah. you know. And I might point them in the right direction. You know, just the person to contact or this like, or or I ring on their behalf. You know, if they're not able to to um, get the information, like just. What I find is a lot of people are not really kind of up to date of what's, you know, what's the way the laws change, you know, with Irish water, for example. You know, there's, they have changed a lot of laws, you know. The mm. same with the, the pest control guys, you know. There's a lot, of, a lot of things are changing and people wouldn't just be aware that, you know, these laws change. Um, and... Yes, they would like the, the thing about rats is... You know, if you I find if you lock them out of one route, they're inclined to find another route, and they will go through anything. You know, I've seen them even on O'Connor Street; they're eating through concrete, you know, to get in. So it's it's it's, it's to show how fierce they are, like, and the damage they can do is unbelievable. Eating eating through concrete, they're that aggressive, are they? Yeah, oh, they're that. See, their teeth regrow the whole time, so. They have to gnaw at something to keep their teeth down. So they'll, they'll chew and keep chewing and chewing and chewing, like. So they, they need through electric wires, you know. They, they need through anything PVC. I've eat, seen them eating the little plastic AJ covers to go into the sewers, like, you know, so. My goodness. But, um, I know it's a strange question, Matt, but uh, do you like your job? I suppose it's the satisfaction of completeness. 
And helping people, like, yes, it, yes, yes. You know, it's an achievement, kind of. Yeah, I, I, some days, I suppose I'm so used to it now, you know, it doesn't really, it's a job to me, you know. I just go yeah. out and, you know, like surely where I would see sewage overflowing in the yard, I know it's dangerous, you know, for yeah. animals and humans. So, like, I, I kind of try to do my best. I suppose if I had a chance of a career change, I might. But well, listen, he, 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 again, not blowing smoke, you're one of the heroes, Matt, because like, if we didn't have proper sewage systems and we didn't have you going helping the likes of the Flins, uh, you wouldn't know how bad this problem would get because, as you said, you, you have to stop the rats or they're going to, their population will explode as well, won't they? Oh, they would, yeah. Like, it's... it's it is everywhere. No, I know it's in every county, like, but, you know, I have seen a large increase over the last few months in around the Waterford area. You know, up in the Gracetew area as well. Mm. They, um, in an abandoned house, they, they've done a, a massive job breaking into the sewer and collapsed it, and um, which created an awful headache for the rest of the residents there. Yes. You know, it was on a communal line and blocked them all up. It took nearly... I suppose the guts of three weeks to, to sort that job out completely. Like, you know, it just shows that they do create an awful lot of damage. So, like, I, I try to kind of highlight even with estate agents when they're selling houses that the new buyers should get, you know, a report done on the drainage system because it's the one place that's overlooked when you're looking to buy a house. You know, they're looking at the cosmetic of the house, but the drainage. It's, it's really important to people buying new houses because it can be the most expensive fix because everything's under the ground area. Um, yeah. You know, and it's harder to get at. And plus, you don't know, like I said, if you have kind of a derelict field behind you, you're guaranteed to see that, you know, there's going to be rats in around that area. And they'll use the sewer systems because they're immune to it. Like, they're, they're, they live in the sewer sites so. of yeah, that's just your main kind of motorway if you want to call it's go from place to place like Matt um, we'll let you get back to work and listen thank you so yeah. much and uh, I, I, as I said to you at the, at the start of this crisis people were on and so many people were praising you and again well done and thank you so much and you mind yourself won't you oh I will do yeah will do it Amy it's just uh, Matt take care mind yourself oh a texter to 083 the whatsapp um, a fantastic worker Matty is he'll stay with you until the problem is solved a wonderful genuine person a very hard worker I can't stress that enough that's from Mary and Grace Jew and you heard um, Matt talk about what happened in Grace Jew and what he's done there um, Teresa phoned in to say her parents live in Strad Valley they live beside a vacant house they're catching two to, two to three rats a day in the back garden Caller said he had a problem with rats in the shed. He bought a few of the plug-in sound admitting devices from the hardware store. It solved the problem within a few days. Another caller says she's having trouble with the electrics in her car. She couldn't figure it out when she brought it to the garage. The rats were after eating through the wiring underneath the bonnet. Um, Another text from Anne-Marie O'Brien. Matty has been helping with the residents here up in Grace Dew. He is a man with a huge heart. He's honest, hardworking, so reliable, will always complete a job. I can't say thank you enough to him. Thank God for people like Matty. He's been helping us so much. Um, Like, Bank Holiday Monday, two days ago, it was really, really hot. Really hot day. And what did Matty Ryan do? He spent the day in an attic, a rat infested, soaking infested with urine, trying to sort out the problem and he did it for free like there's a hero now we'll take more of your texts and comments in a few minutes um, apart from rubbish bird feeders in gardens can be another cause of seed droppings the seed droppings encouraging rodents sympathy to that family it's horrific as we've been trying to do on this programme all along we vary topics and we try to bring you light and shade happiness and ugh disgusting stories like that rat story um, so we're going to go to something a little bit different now and we're going to go to y'all and we are going to go to I think uh, David King uh, David and his son Adam Adam wrote a poem called Mud and uh, he came second in the junior senior infants category the recent teachers Waterford Teachers Centre um, his daddy wrote a book uh, but really Adventures with a Difference and we spoke to David from Dungarvan uh, earlier in this year he's born with a 
a thing called Ostrogenesis Imperfectia. It's a brittle bone condition that causes stunted growth and makes them prone to fractures. Um, David, good morning. How are you? Great, Damien. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. The weather's nice in you all this morning. Oh, it's unbelievable weather. Yeah, we're, we're really blessed with it now. It's a good stretch. The hay fever isn't great, but the weather's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And you're doing all your exercises and Joe Wicks and everything this morning. Tell us about the family. Remind us about the family, please. Uh, so we have uh, five kids at home. We have uh, Danny, who's 11. We have Katie, who's nine. We have Robert, who's uh, seven. We have Adam, who's five. And we have a new baby girl, Sarah, who has just gone five months. Oh, my goodness. Um, how yeah. How have you managed... Ash, look, it's great. I mean, you know, like we, we don't know any other way. They're fantastic kids, on fairness. They're, they're really brilliant. And have they all got on OK? Like, that's a lot of people. That's seven in the household for the last three months. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what's yeah, it, yeah. what's it been like? I, I, I think, look, it's, it's, I mean, look, every family has their challenges, you know, and um, all those things. And we, I suppose we have our own unique ones too, but it, it has to say the, the kids have been brilliant and, I mean, I've always believed this, but these times remind you, you know, children will teach you a lot about resilience. And uh, our, our children have been incredibly resilient through the whole um, through the whole shutdown period and all that kind of thing. And, and, and you know, I guess having each other around, even though they probably wouldn't admit it to each other, but having each other around has been great for them. And yeah, even my wife and I were commenting the other day, even just to have someone around the house, even to have an argument with, you know, <laughs> as well as to get along with and play with <laughs> is, is, is a, a blessing, you know. And, uh, mm. and, and look... Uh, they're really great. I mean, like we actually spent yesterday evening out painting our playhouse, and all 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 of them, bar Sarah, who um, can't walk yet, you know, all of them rode in and uh, had to paint the playhouse, and we had great fun, and, and you know, so they're they're absolutely brilliant. Ah, that's great. It's about making memories, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And I think you know, it's, it's funny. My uh, I, I do a, a photo book for my wife every year for Christmas, and every time. You know, because obviously things are closed now and we've cancelled summer holidays and all that. And I know these are very much, you know, first world problems, but like, you know, we keep saying when these moments pass that, oh, they'll they be missing from the book, you know, um, at this year and all that. But there'll be lots of other stuff in there. Lots of, lots of other special, precious memories, you know. And, uh, and I have to say as well, like, uh, the lads' teachers have been fantastic uh, in, in these times as well to keep the work and keep the learning going at home, you know. I mean, it's, it's, they've just done incredible stuff I won't say you're the perfect daddy now or the perfect husband or anything like that doing all the little sure, <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds uh, no fair play to you and it's been and tell tell me a little bit about Adam now you're five year old uh, so yeah so Adam is uh, five years old he's a student in Tom Priest National School in Gertrude in East Cork and uh, I was talking to you on the phone before he, he's uh, he's uh, myself and Adam have written a little book together as well um, called Boots, but really adventures is different. And I was, uh, we were talking on the radio before, and uh, uh, he's a, he's an absolutely great guy. He's a really really great guy. So he is, um, and uh, really really good kid, and uh, he just loves life. Absolutely loves life, and uh, and uh, he's brilliant. Yeah. And you're going to put me on to him there now, if he's there beside you. Yeah, I am. Yeah. He, so he's written a, he's written a little poem, uh, and he entered it into the water for a teacher centre's competition. Yeah. And uh, and I let you I let him tell you about it. And uh, yeah, so he he was really really delighted to be awarded a prize. It was really really thrilled, and uh, he had great fun doing it as well. And I have to give full credit to 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 uh, Adam's mammy now, who was the one who helped him uh, with all these things. You know, because I work at home, but uh, she she um, she helped him with uh, all of the. Uh, pulling the, the words together and that but I don't think you need much help for this one because it's, it's on a topic that he, uh, he enjoys so <laughs> I'll put you on to Adam okay thanks David thank you oh, Adam, hello Adam uh, hi Adam hi how are you good you did your Joe Wicks exercises this morning did you yeah uh, what do you like about it or what's the toughest the toughest exercise is the bicycle crunches Oh yeah, those bicycle crunches are tough. They're tough on the tummy, aren't they? And uh, yeah, you like doing the exercises, though. It keeps you going. And tell me, tell me about mud. Tell me about why you like mud. Because I every summer I play in it when it's raining. And you can have great fun in mud, can you? Yeah. And what do you like doing in mud? What do you like making? What do you like? playing or making mud pies and things like that. Tell me about that. Um, I like I like driving cars and just into the muddy water. And you decided to write a little poem about mud, was it? Tell me about this. 
Yeah. So the call me playing in the most, playing in the most. I like playing in the most because I can make walls. I can put in walls. I like trees. I can make trees and stick in leaves. Playing in the most, playing in the most. Yeah, we're going to, to play the full poem now. Moats by Adam King, age five. Playing in the moats, playing in the moats. I like to play in the moats because because I can make roads and and I can I can put in water like a stream. I can I I can make make trees and stick in leaves. Playing in the moats, playing in the moats. Adam, the summer is it's 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 been very dry. The the weather's been very dry at the minute, so the mud is kind of hard at the minute, isn't it? Yeah. And would you like to see a bit of rain? Yeah. And uh if it does rain a little bit, what will you do? Will you go out and play in the mud? Yeah. Ah, you're very good. And tell me about your family. You've had a you you've all got on well and how did it go painting the shed? Good. Excellent. Well, listen, keep writing and hopefully there'll be a bit of rain in y'all and you'll get to play in the mud soon, OK? Yeah. And put me back on to your daddy there. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> He's the only man in y'all praying for rain. Although there'll be a few farmers <laughs> as well playing for rain as well. There might be... A f- <laughs> Could be a farmer in him yet, you know. Get a bit of land there yeah. now and uh, a bit of headage and, uh, uh, you know, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, you never know. He's a great young lad uh, and that's lovely. The poem is superb, it's great. Listen, David, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to talk to you and continued um, success with the family and uh, I'd say the little photo album that you have for your wife at Christmas now is going to be a special one this year as well, even more special, Absolutely. won't it? Absolutely. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully. We'll just keep, as you said, keep making the memories and keep, keep, uh, just keep enjoying yourselves. This is what life is about, isn't it? It is, yeah. David, thanks very much. God bless. Thank you, Damien. Take care. Th- thanks, David. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, a lot of people texting in about Matt. Um, other people saying about derelict houses and derelict places. Damien, if you have a phone call for Matt, I have a block drain out the front. Matty Ryan, a true gentleman, not many like him anymore. Old school, reminds me of my own deceased father, regards John. Uh, a great man, Matt should have a community award, selfless and giving without asking in return. Uh, derelict house at the end, uh, somewhere around Pierce Park, there's bags of rubbish. Uh, can, can rats come from that? I don't know. Oh. And uh, other people talking about different things. So let us know, 83 975 if you're a parent with a Leaving Cert student. If you're a Leaving Cert student, you won't want to miss the next item. Now I'm going to talk to Dennis Ring from Blackwater Community College in a second. Firstly, happy 50th birthday to Ruth Hutchinson in Ashley Court lots of love from her mam and dad Una texted in to say what a lovely breath of fresh air little Adam was listening to his mud poem Dennis good morning good morning Damien thank you very much for joining us um, Principal of Blackwater Community College in Lismore today marks what should have been the first day of the Leaving Cert and we're going to talk about the predictive grading system uh, for class of 2020 uh, firstly I know you want to, to wish everybody the best and you had a sort of a uh, a type of graduation in some respect, did you, uh, Dennis? Yeah, we had last Thursday night, we had a, a virtual graduation. It was nice, the, the students um, worked on materials uh, in terms of photographs and various things like that for us, and um, also our uh, head boys and girls had presentations on it, and uh, various members of the school community contributed to us. Our subject departments all delivered their own messages in their own inimitable style, <laughs> and... Um, it was good humoured and it was nice and there was um we had a prayer service as part of it as well, conducted by Father Michael Cullen of Lismore and also uh, Dean Draper. And um overall it was it was nice, pleasant and uh, I have to say I'd like to, to, to thank the parents and students for their excellent Yes. To it. Now I've got uh, two documents in front of me. One is the Leaving Cert 2020 estimated percentage mark, that's form A and uh, then the second form is the class rank order and this is uh, form B. So these are the forms and there's guidelines that each teacher has been given that's going to be marking the Leaving Cert in the predictive grade system. Like it's a whole new it's a whole new thing, obviously. It's, it's the first time this has been tried. Uh, I think they're doing it in Scotland as well and maybe other places. So in terms of uh, other countries to look at. 
But how has it been so far in terms of the information that you've got, Dennis, regarding the predictive grading system? Um, Damien, I had a conversation with you a few weeks ago. If I was to to talk and anticipate what it was going to be like, I would have been totally wrong in terms of giving us credit. I'm amazed by how well organised it is, and I'm reassured also by it. I have um, a son and two daughters who've gone through the system. Um, I remember speaking to you a few weeks ago and said, look, I would have preferred them to go through the the state exam. And I think everybody would ideally like the the option of doing the exam itself. But having said that, a few weeks down the track and seeing what's involved in it and working through the minutiae of it, um, a lot of our teachers at this stage would have had their alignment meetings and have been working through the materials. I have to say, um, given the feedback of the teachers, that some of them would have had serious sleepless nights regarding the whole process, which you can understand. And others then would find it very reassuring that they feel that they have a significant input into it, as opposed to maybe a faceless person who gathers a bag of papers up in that loan and goes away and how qualified they are, how good they are, at, yeah. uh, uh, dealing with a student that they've never seen in their life. Um, to be honest with you, you're happy as, so far. OK, let's... L- as the weeks have gone on and as we've been engaging in the process, I have to say uh, there's a lot of positive uh, elements to it. OK, let's talk about a few very specific things. What's an align an alignment meeting? These are meetings you've had with the teachers. OK, so our teachers would have been kind of prepared for this to a certain degree. In, um, in junior cert, there have been things called uh, flower meetings, which essentially are when teachers are grading students on pieces of work, CBAs as they're known as in junior cycle, teachers within the department might get together to look at different teachers' grading of it and to see um, are they off base, is there some consistency on it, and they get a little bit of feedback from each other, some professional feedback. In alignment meetings at Leaving Cert, I I presume it's a god sentence to a certain extent that an element of this has been in junior cycle, what the teachers are able to do is they're able to look at how different teachers have graded their students in this, in the calculated grades model. They're able to show what they've done and get a bit of professional support from their colleagues from the point of view, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you've done that fine and, and there's a reassurance in it and so on. And there's an element of trying to have a consistency through a subject in terms of the, the results and so on. So what, what you do at that meeting, to be fair to teachers, it's not just that one meeting. Several of them, they have had hours and hours of deliberation on this. Yeah. Uh, online meetings themselves. On uh, uh, okay. Webex, and then they, they come together for that final meeting whereby they will submit um, Form A, as you say, individual students' map, mm. and Form B, which is a ranking from within that class group. Yeah, it's a class rank order and it's... Um lists the students in order of expected level of examination performance and says the first student on the list should be the one the school expects to do best and so on accordingly. So you you get these, uh, you have a look at these as well. There, there can be some problems, um, Dennis. For example, we talk about will the junior cert be taken into account. We also talk, like, will some students possibly be punished because teachers may be criticised for overachieving? So... There is this bell curve, the national bell curve when it comes to student grades. So, for example, let's take H1. 2.9% of English students get H1 marks every year. History, 6.7% and girls normally better. Geography, 3.7%. German, 6.1%. Irish, 5.7%. If it looks like that you are overachieving within your school, you might ask a teacher, hold on a second, give that person a H2, even though she or he thinks there might be two or three students in that English class that deserve a H2 because you don't want to be doing anything that sort of upsets the bell curve from the national perspective. Uh, David, the bell curve is very much in the distance from this process. It is there in the background, but your instructions essentially are to identify the capacity of the student in terms of if he or she was to have sat the exam, what result they're likely to get. And on that, you have to present evidence on the basis of, okay, like to be honest with you, uh, uh, most parents are familiar with BSWare and ePortal at the moment. They're, they would be online where parents would have access to their students' results on a day-to-day basis online. 
um, and they have a code, they have a PIN number to get in there just to monitor their attendance, their behavior, their results, and so on. So from the point of view of results, no student should do worse than this. Students, basically, there should be a consistency, there should be an element of looking at how the student does. The bell curve, I know a lot has played out in the media regarding this, but I think it's exaggerated to a degree. Because once you have evidence to support that your student, like, for example, on, on a given year, there might be one year you might get eight H1s in a particular subject, and another year you might get three in a particular subject, and another year you might get five. Yeah. So basically, you, you look at each year group as a unique year group. You look at their achievements as a unique group. But if it is the case that uh, some students are doing particularly well and you're looking at them, then you look, you look at VSware, you look at their online system and see, well, does this add up? Does this make sense? Mm. And then if the, the but, junior cert doesn't come into this. OK, but you don't want to draw, Dennis, you don't want to draw attention. You, you don't want to draw attention to your school as being sort of going way beyond. So you might take, you might look at the average of, and I'm just not, not just saying you, but any principal, because you have to sign off on this. You might look at the average of five years. So there may be eight students in Lismore this year that might deserving of H1s, but you'll think, hold on a second, is it really eight? Well, you, you didn't have to look at the evidence, Damien. Yeah. If the evidence is there, and for example, the department, to be fair in this system, are, are being very fair on it because they're saying, okay, maybe your results this year are a lot better than they were the last two or three years. But if that is the case, then there has to be some correlation at junior cert level. So what I'm saying to you is junior cert isn't taken into account in this, but if it is the case that your results seem to be disproportionately good, there should have been some flag raised somewhere along the line in junior cert to prove that this was an exceptionally good year. Do you know what I mean? I do so, know what you mean, yeah. But you're saying yeah. then that, that the junior cert won't be taken into account and yet you're saying you may have to revert to those junior cert results if there's some sort of doubt regarding yeah. the potential mark. Yeah, well, the department have those figures. So the, the, department, the department have all the stats on a school in terms of their leaving cert performance over the last number of years and also junior cert performance. We... We are not, in calculating the grades, we do not use the junior cert results, and they're not to be used. But to the, that's not to say the department, at the end of the day, if your results seem to be particularly good, that they can't go back and see, hang on a second, well, actually, it was a particularly good year. Yeah, but the teacher's results are final, and you're signing off on that, so they can't go changing it, can they? Or the, depart- or the teacher's results are not final. Are they not? No, no. The teacher results go to the department. Yeah. The department then analyse and so on. The department come back with a final grade. Now, ideally, uh, what the teachers are recommending should be very close to what the outcome should be. But the department would be very clear in saying that, well, uh, yeah. this is why this is their mm. That's where they, their process kicks in. They um, actually look. Uh, they take the information from the school when it's input it. Yeah. That the instructions as to how to input that yet. Um, once that's input to the department, the department then look at the school's uh, um, results. They look at their ranking. And, and, and they look at the national bell curve. This is where it's going yeah, to come into it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So there, I, there, I would say, there, there's a possibility. I hope it's not going to happen, Dennis. You hope it's not going to happen that students, some students might be punished because teachers might be criticised for overachieving. They won't be punished if there's, if there's evidence there, Damien. And if, if there wasn't evidence there, they shouldn't get it in the first place. Spot on. Very, very well said. Dennis? So, so, like, I would say, to be honest with you, I, I would look at the whole... As, as somebody now who said the son and two daughters gone through it, I would have loved if my son or daughter had the option, uh, had a double option. Number one, I would have loved if they could do the matric, which I was able to do in my time, right? And, and maybe back in your time. So that was a, a, a safety net leaving cert. In this regard, students have the option of doing this yeah. if they want to do it. Secondly, which is unprecedented going back a number of years now, they can actually merge the results from what they get from their calculated grades and their exams. So, for example, if I'm not happy with my Irish results in the calculated grades, then I can set the Irish exam and I can take that and I can mix and match whatever I want to. Now, you, you, everybody will know that a change was made in a number of years ago that people couldn't marry two leaving certs uh, one year and, and the repeat year, um, whereas you, you were able to do all of that in the past. 
So there's a lot of things there, uh, Damien, that I would see are helping the students. I think, I think to be honest with you, in so far as they could, I think the departments have been quite fair in terms of trying to accommodate um, the students and trying to make allowances for them with, with this regard in, in the circumstances, which were very difficult, as you, as you know. Um, Dennis, very well explained. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to try and talk to a few different students and principals over the next few days. To you sorry, and... Sorry, sorry, David. Just before I leave, can I just... Uh, ask Briefly, yeah. The one thing I'm delighted with just this morning, driving down to school, it was surreal not coming down and having an, a mass in the morning of the leaving certain students all anxious and the parents attending and so on, and the parents more nervous than the students in many cases. What is reassuring is what I call um, exam nerves and um, students. I'm involved 34 years now in education, and I don't think there's a year that I haven't witnessed as a teacher or as a school principal where somebody does something erratic on the day of an exam or there's a bad paper. And that's not going to happen now, yes, yes, yes. Or that there's somebody who 99% of the time wouldn't make um, an error like doing something from a section they shouldn't have or taking yeah. an extra question in a section. You must remember all of that exam anxiety is gone now. Is gone. Well, which, which is the one reassurance I have this morning as well. Very honest. good point. Dennis, to you and the, the children and everybody there, God bless and thanks very much for talking to us again. Appreciate it. Thanks, Damien. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dennis there. Dennis King. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I was De- uh, David King we spoke to earlier. Dennis there talking to us from Blackwater, Lismore National uh, Secondary School College.